Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, we're gonna build this. This is a hybrid shade house slash greenhouse that you can customize to your environmental needs in the location that you're growing. So this video is not a how to build video because I'm not by any means a qualified carpenter or tradesman. This is just a how I built my greenhouse shade house hybrid. The reason I say this is I've made a few mistakes uh, over the build, uh, including I would have liked the pitch to have been more on the roof, purely because I was originally intending this to be only a shade house uh, without the polycarbonate on the roof. And once I had the structure in place, I changed the plan to incorporate the polycarbonate so that I can have this 3000 litre poly water tank uh, attached to the back guttering, which I'll be adding to the roof of the building. I don't need the rain to water my plants. In fact, the rain just dilutes my nutrient solution. So uh, I can collect the rainwater and use it for my hydroponic nutrients and to top up all of the systems. So it makes the greenhouse shade house a self-contained system in that I don't need to add water to the systems because it collects the water for me. Another reason I wanted to go with a shade house or a greenhouse was to protect my produce from pests. So uh, this is 50% shade cloth and insects have a really hard time getting through. I'm not saying they're all not gonna get through, but it'll prevent a large percentage of them from entering in and laying eggs, especially larger flying insects, which are the main problem in hydroponics as they can just fly onto your crop, lay eggs, and then their young will just eat your plants. There's no real worry about soil borne pests in hydroponics. So if you can eliminate the flying pests, you'll eliminate most of your pest problems. Another reason I went with the shade cloth and not the greenhouse material for the outsides and eventually I'm going to have shade cloth coming across the top of the building is that I wanted protection from the intensity of the Queensland sun. 50% is right for my area. I'm Wide Bay Burnett region of Queensland and if I was any further up, I'd jump up to 70%. If I was further down, I'd jump down to 30% shade cloth. However, you can tailor the shade cloth or greenhouse material, the poly material that you could add to the sides instead of the shade cloth to your needs and your climate. If I were to do fully poly walls and roof, uh, this greenhouse would be way too hot for my climate. Later on, I'm going to install shades that pull across the roof with 50% shade cloth for the summer months. But for now, we're just heading into winter and I don't require those shades on the roof yet. But as you can see, I've installed the bolts ready for the wires that I'll have the shades retract over the top of my system on. So let's get to building the structure. I was sad to see it go, but I had to dismantle the old system. It was definitely my least favorite part of this whole build, but bigger and brighter things to come. I pulled it down and I got a bloke in to level out the area. So I wanted the entire building to be completely level before I started building on the site. For the larger structure, I actually got a mate to help me out. So I picked up some stuff from Bunnings. I'll supply a list of equipment and supplies we needed to build this greenhouse. But essentially, we're digging holes here for 150 millimeter coppers logs, which we dug 600 mil into the ground uh, using a battery powered auger. The distance between the poles was decided by the length of timber that we were going to use to span between them. So the lengths of timber were 4.8 each. So the span between the poles is 2.4 meters. This allows us to make the most of the material that we're building the structure with. 
the way that we leveled the poles, and I'm not sure that this is the conventional way to level poles, but we actually set the top structure up before cementing in the posts. So by having all of the poles supported by the top structure, we could then make them all level. And as long as we got our spacing right, the structure would work out. So at this point, it was getting a bit late. So we just decided to do the rest in the morning. I mixed up the quick set concrete to the recommended manufacturer specifications. And I thought digging holes was hard. Try mixing bags of cement by hand, it's the worst. My holes are 600 millimeters by 300 millimeters. And this is about right for my soil type. I've got hard clay, hence the hydroponics. <laughs> uh, so I just cemented those in. And then I had a load of crusher dust dropped off from my local landscape supply. Now this is gonna become the floor of my greenhouse shade house. Now the reason I chose Crusher Dust is it compacts really well, uh, it's easy on bare feet, and it makes it hard for weeds to pop up. So I created a frame around the Shade House Greenhouse. The frame is made from 100 by 38 millimeter, 4.8 meter wet sawn H3 treated pine. It's the same stuff that the roof's made of, and Basically all the dimensions were made to fit the 4.8 span of these pine rails. Once I had the frame in place around the bottom border, I could then spread out the crusher dust uh, in such a way that I could level it out so that it was an even 100 millimeters across. Now this took four cubic meters of crusher dust for my area. Uh, and that was, I think it was 37 square meters. So 100 mils over 37 is just under four square meters of material. Once I had all the material laid out in an even-ish fashion, uh, I rented out a compactor, which I'd never used before, but I figured, you know, how hard can it be? So I leveled it out with a landscaper's rake Finished it off with a level and a flat piece of timber so that I could get it nice and even and started up the compactor. Needless to say, Floki did not like that compactor once it was going. But it was a lot easier to handle than I thought. The key idea is to let the compactor do the work for you as it vibrates each step it takes it will move a section forward and it will basically just walk itself around without you putting any effort in whatsoever so i also recommend wetting the ground it makes it a lot easier to compact and also it removes the dust that you stir up as you're compacting once i had the floor done it's now time to install the roof now I was using polycarbonate panels, which required a 10 millimeter hole be drilled into the polycarb before screwing it down with the self-sealing roof screws. You can actually get screws that will drill the hole and screw it down, but they are actually poisonously expensive. I sealed all of the ends with specific foam that's made to seal for roof panel sheeting. And this is so that I can insect proof the entire roof once I have the side panels on as well. I didn't want insects finding their way underneath the corrugations in the roof paneling. The roof itself is just held together with batten screws, which I've joined each piece of timber with. And once I'd finished the roof, I couldn't help but test it. <laughs> I created a door frame out of the same 100 H3 timber and installed it for a screen door that I picked up for next to nothing that I will use as the entrance to the shade house greenhouse. Now there are a lot of ways to hold shade cloth and greenhouse film onto a structure like this and they're all really expensive. I wanted a way that I could easily 
put on and take off shade cloth uh, if it gets damaged. And the way that I came up with was using eyelets and wire rope strung around the outside of the building. And in between the eyelets, I'd use little horseshoe nails to keep the wire close to the building. And then I could just go along with netting clips and clip the shade cloth to the top, the bottom, and the middle of the building where I'd have the stainless steel wire strung along. To tension the wire, I just used galvanized turnbuckles, which I attached to the wire with galvanized wire clamps that I tightened in place. And I use these clamps to attach the turnbuckles and at each end of the wire. The other fixing you can see there is a galvanized eye bolt. And once you've finished framing a door, you really gotta test it out properly. And it worked. I used this chainsaw to make the ends flat for the guttering. And now it's time to put in the horseshoe nails to hold that wire in place where there's no eyelets. And we can start to attach the shade cloth. Now the shade cloth I'm using is a white 50% shade cloth, 3.66 by 60 meters. And I'm attaching it with these uh, shade cloth fixings and nails to the hard to get to parts. And these are netting pliers and netting clips, which I'll be using to attach the shade cloth to the wire that's strung around the top, middle, and base of the structure. So I'm just doubling the top over and attaching it with those netting pliers so that I get a nice good grip on at least a couple of layers of the shade cloth. Now the reason that I've used white shade cloth for this build is because it doesn't affect the spectrum of light that's entering into the shade house greenhouse. The top polycarbonate panels for the roofing are UV resistant, so I'm already blocking out UV light from the top. So I'm hoping to get enough UV A and B in from the sides to negate that. And with the white shade cloth, I'm not messing with the spectrum at all. So I shouldn't get any leggy growth or any other negative effects from a warped spectrum. And that's that. It's not quite finished yet. I've still got to install the guttering in the tank. And there are a few things that I'd encourage you to change if you were planning something like this. Um, I would definitely slope the roof a lot more than I have. As I said, I didn't plan for this originally to have a hard roof, and now that it does, I'm really happy, but I kind of wish that I factored that slope in from the start. Uh, you can see I've got some chucks up in the corners to give it slope, but just to be safe, I would definitely pre-plan in more slope than this. Uh, another thing is, uh, because of the weight of the roof now, I would have made these top beams larger so that there would be no bowing in the roof. There is a little bit of bowing and I'll just have to wait and see how that goes in the future. I'll leave a list of all of the items that I used down in the description. So this shade house greenhouse ended up costing me about $2,300. That's definitely gonna vary on your location and availability of supplies. Uh, and the discounts you can get from the retailers that are close to you, whether they're trade discounts or whatnot. It'll also vary on the quality of your components. So 2,400 Australian dollars got me this, and that's including all the landscaping and bulk material for the ground as well. I'm really happy with how this greenhouse shade house turned out, and I'm really excited to share all the produce that I produce with you guys. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.